Today's topic is called microcirculation. This is part of our circulatory system, which is our cardiovascular system, which is arteries and veins and microvessels. Now these microvessels are literally 200 times smaller than a piece of hair. So it wasn't until recently that we actually have technology that can see them and literally watch one red blood cell at a time squeezing through those little openings. So this is a very exciting time for our health because doctors in the past never could really do anything about microcirculation problems because we didn't have instruments that small that could operate on vessels that tiny. And so we just had to rely on the own body's natural abilities to heal and to remodel. Now we have over 2,000 gallons of blood going through your heart every day. And that blood's trying to get into all the nooks and crannies of your body, and it needs to do so through the function of microvessels. So how do microvessels function? Well, when we we're 18 to 25 years old, they would constrict and dilate and constrict and dilate and constrict about 50 to 60 times every minute. That's a lot of blood to be able to push through those tissues. Now, as we age, unfortunately, that slows down. And in fact, by the time you're 65 years old, you're lucky to get them to pulse and dilate one time every 10 minutes. This is why people over 65 years old start to age pretty darn quickly. Their skin gets older, their face looks older, their hair turns gray, their body's just not able to reproduce the tissue like it once used to. So the better we can understand that, now we know how to better take care of ourselves when it comes to cardiovascular health. So there are all sorts of great things we can do to improve that picture. Now what's that picture look like? Well, diet can really help about 95% of everybody's problems when it comes to health issues. So outside of just eating a very clean diet and avoiding toxins, there's several nutrients we can take to bring oxygen back to the heart muscle to help the cholesterol levels in the body be managed, to help with blood pressure. We even have nutrients that can help grow the lining back on the inside of those microvessels and help your body return to an optimal state of cardiovascular health. Outside of that, we have technologies that we use daily called PEMF technology, which is the pulse electromagnetic frequency that will help your body start to produce Nitric oxide, which allows those vessels to continue to do their pulsing and moving the blood through the tissues just like we need it to. Now, outside of nutrients and outside of technology, I have to say that drinking enough water and, of course, exercise plays a huge role in your body's ability to move the blood through your body and continue to keep you as healthy as possible. So I look forward to having further discussions with you on specifically what nutrients are going to be best for you and what type of exercise programs will be best for your physiology that's not going to hurt you and cause you to not be able to exercise because you're in this injury state. So until we talk next, I hope you have a great day and I look forward to assisting you in your health.